Lunch? What'd you pack for me? Look, for the last time, I'm getting plenty of fiber. Dear Tim and Moby, I thought that air was mostly made up of oxygen, but my brother just told me that it's mostly nitrogen. Who's right? Sincerely, Eloise. Well, you can definitely find both elements in the atmosphere. But oxygen makes up only 21% of it, while nitrogen accounts for a whopping 78%. Hey, we need nitrogen just as much as oxygen. It's a key component of DNA, the body's genetic program for life, and of all proteins, the building blocks of cells. Well, unlike oxygen, we can't just breathe in nitrogen and put it straight to work in our bodies. We need nitrogen in a different form, and we get it from food. Well, it's all part of a process called the nitrogen cycle. See, nitrogen is constantly moving in a big circle from the air to the ground to plants, animals, and humans, and back again. First, nitrogen from the atmosphere falls to the ground thanks to precipitation, snow, rain, hail, that sort of thing. Once it's in the soil, the nitrogen crosses paths with a special type of bacteria. These bacteria often live on the roots of plants in a mutually beneficial relationship. The plants give the bacteria a cozy home, and the bacteria give the plants... Well, let's take a closer look. The bacteria latch on to a nitrogen molecule, break it into two separate atoms, and combine each with hydrogen to form a compound called ammonia. Just like that, the gaseous nitrogen has been fixed or attached to other elements to form compounds that cells can use. Right, that process is called nitrogen fixation. Well, actually, ammonia itself is pretty toxic, so before it can be used, it needs to be turned into something else. For this, a different type of bacteria grabs onto each ammonia molecule and combines it with oxygen. This step is called nitrification, and it creates a compound that plants can safely absorb through their roots. Plants use these compounds to build proteins. Animals, in turn, get these nitrogen-based goodies by eating plants and other animals. Well, no, this stuff doesn't stay with us forever, since all living things have to, um, emit waste. And when plants and animals die, their bodies decay. The proteins and other nitrogen compounds inside them return to the soil. A third type of bacteria breaks these substances back down to ammonia. This process is called ammonification. This new ammonia can go right back into the nitrification step.
Well, plants don't absorb all of the substances created at that step. Some of it is snagged by a fourth kind of bacteria. These guys steal the oxygen atoms from those compounds, leaving plain old nitrogen gas as a byproduct. This has the opposite effect of nitrification, so we call this process denitrification. The leftover nitrogen is free to return to the atmosphere, completing the nitrogen cycle. <coughs> yeah, human activity can have a huge impact on the nitrogen cycle. Fertilizers, smoke, and sewage from factories, not to mention the wastes of farm animals, all add millions of tons of extra nitrogen to the environment. That throws the nitrogen cycle out of balance, leading to the loss of oxygen in lakes and rivers, soil that won't grow anything, and polluted or acid rain. If we want to keep the delicate cycle of nitrogen moving, we have to take steps to protect our environment. Using alternative energy sources instead of burning fossil fuels is a big help. So is cutting back on the use of artificial fertilizers and properly cleaning up after our livestock. Yeah, I guess that's a start.